Welcome everybody to the Debian Java Birds of a Feather session. Uh, we, I, I sent an email yesterday to the Debian uh, Java mailing list asking for topics, and throughout the day uh, we got a lot of contributions on this. Uh, I'm going to be doing the little talking on this session. Thank you. Uh, so. <coughs> So these are some of the topics that uh, the people posted on the on the Gobi page, and the idea will be to try to go through the room and select some of these topics, talk a little bit about them, and um, then collect notes under each topic here, so we can have it as a, as a document. And well, then I think our Gobi is a collaborative editor, and uh, we might have some uh, people joining us by um, uh, IRC. Okay, so. Uh, uh, Thorsten, do you want to choose one topic to begin with? <laughs> yeah, I would just start with the first one. Uh, mm -hmm. What are our, are our plans for bigger packages? Um, the current state in Debian is that we have some bigger packages like Eclipse, but only the, uh, the main applications. The main application, not all those nice and nifty plugins. We have stuff like Hadoop, uh, which is the uh, Facebook uh, enterprise, uh, how is it called? <laughs> Framework for. Uh, uh, MapReduce. Map yeah, MapReduce and yeah. Mm -hmm. um, some stuff I'm working on currently is getting JRuby back into main and some other, uh, I've added some other ideas, but it's quite a lot of work, like getting some of the Java enterprise application servers into Debian. We have some core stuff the for libraries only, not, not uh, any application server. Uh, we have no web applications like Liferay. Uh, the nice thing about uh, these big packages is that uh, really attract new volunteers into the team. I, I joined, for example, to help Niels with Eclipse. It would be interesting from the audience if someone is interested in getting some larger framework or application into Debian. Uh, if you would have something in Debian and uh, if you have a any pressing need to get something into Debian, which is still not there. This is something that would be nice for my particular job, would be if JBoss was usable yeah. in Debian, and apparently yeah. it isn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so would, would you be willing to put some uh, help on that? Uh, I would be willing to help, but my expertise would uh, come short of uh, doing it, but I'd be happy to help testing it and doing things like that, for sure. Yeah. One of the problems of JBoss is that they... Can you close, uh, speak closer to the mic? Oh, okay. One of the problems of JBoS is that they are starting to use Maven to build uh, JBoS. That's not a problem. Uh, they start building it in JBoS 6. Uh, but they are, don't use the central Maven repository, so, which is even a problem by itself. They are using its o their own Maven repository with their own binaries where nobody knows where they come from, how they are patched, and yeah. everything else. So that's uh, quite a horror. Actually, I had a bunch of questions. I'm uh, sort of a, a newbie in terms of pol Debian policies and um, started noticing a couple of projects that were using um, the Maven repositories uh, for having all the primary location for all their stuff instead of the, uh, the lib uh, Java uh, area. And just kind of looked around in terms of Debian policy and it's like, well, where is Maven repositories as the primary location for stuff? It's sort of nowhere, so I don't even know, like, well, if I'm making a new package, is it expected? I mean, are people going to copy the example, or, or what? I, I don't know. I no, we can, cannot any, uh, use any external repositories uh, if we want to package some package for, for main. So we have to resort to all packages, or we have every package, every dependency in main, and their dependencies, and the dependencies of the dependencies. Uh, yeah, it seems as though um, on many projects that I've worked on, when a precedent is set and not actually corrected, um, 
very quickly, what happens is the problem is replicated by people coming into the system saying, well, I, here is this exemplar. It exists, therefore, it must be an okay way to do it. Okay, I'll copy that. So it's more toxic than just its existence. One of the things I've been working on is to get up a page of example Debian packages uh, for Java and say, if you have this sort of package, this is what your packaging should look like. At the moment, I have things using Ant and um, things where you have to roll your own build system, which Java help helps with. Um, I would it'd be really nice if I could get, because I don't actually know anything about Maven, if I could get some examples there using Maven and how, how, how to do it properly. Um, they're at the stage where I have several of them written, um, and I'd like to get a couple more and then actually try and stick it up um, on the package Java web page. That's a logistic issue. Can you introduce yourself the first time you uh, get the mic so other people can know? Sorry, I'm Matthew Johnson. Uh, I write Java Helper, amongst other things. Hi, I'm Tony Mansell. I'm going back to the packaging larger packages. I just had a kind of comment question, so I'm not up to speed on uh, kind of how the, the big packages like Eclipse and JBoss build and things like that, but how much do you think, I mean, the maintainers who have worked on these things, it seems like the problem is that when upstream goes way out in left field, then we end up paying the cost, if you will, um, kind of long term, and I'm just curious how much we might be helped by actually advocating saner building practices back towards upstream, because it happens with smaller packages too. Uh, so the Antler 3.2 is, has crapped out job ref. I'm going to have to port old code kind of forward to Antler um, because there's all, these there's all this Java software in the Java ecosystem that is simply, I pulled these jars, it worked right then, and they, there's no view towards continuous library maintenance. Um, one of the things that's happened at FOSDEM this year was that we did a talk in the Java track there um, where it was like, there's a whole bunch of people there who are upstream Java maintainers, and we tried to explain to them all our point of view of trying to package their software, why we do what we do. Um, and I think being able to do that more would be good. Uh, because yes, if we can get upstream to you know, produce working practices that make it easier for us, then that's gonna make it a lot easier to get all sorts of stuff packaged. And you know, ultimately, that's gonna benefit upstream. So um, Stanford University's uh, um, account management system right now is written in Java, and we're taking it over in our group and planning on hopefully releasing the whole thing open source uh, to whatever extent we can. But the, the, So I'm kind of tackling all this from the perspective of I have a bunch of internal packages that we need to write, um, and then hopefully eventually they become uh, more generally usable stuff. So one of the things that would be great along those lines is if you've got a document somewhere that says, here's how you write a sane Java build system if you're an upstream maintainer of a Java package. Uh, I mean, we would start following it right away. Um, and similar to that, is is there a policy already for how do you package web apps, Tomcat style? I mean, the things that would be deployed right now with a, as a WAR file, which is probably not a great way to deploy it in Debian, um, is there a policy on how that's done? Uh, I believe there is a draft web apps policy banging around somewhere, but not via Debian Java. Um, so as to the um, versioning of jar files, um, this is something that is just a, a real bane. Um, recently, you know, I had a bunch of dependencies. I want to say, you know, I need to be a such and so version of jar file, whatever. And um, one of the, you know, just elementary problems in Java is that you can't actually easily make a symlink in Java, right? And then none of the, or can, you can't really tell if something is a symlink in Java. And so if you've got a Java-based build system like Ant, you know, um, and you look at the various Java-based packaging tools to ba make a deb file, to make a binary deb, it's really a, sort of a nightmare. Well, um, to actually build the dev, you should probably not be building them directly. Um, the um, helper tools are mostly written in Python or um, Python Perl um, or shell scripts, um, which can get that all right for you. But there are a number of deploy packages where you try to use the tools uh, coming in. Sure, and, and I'm... Um, I uh, would like to try and improve the documentation and say, look, here's the examples of how you do this properly. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Wookie. Um, so I don't know anything about Java, um, but uh, it said in the thing, come along if you package a Java package and you'll 
uh, new to this and tell us what your problems were. Um, so uh, I know about this cave survey software, so I know about that, but I don't know anything about Java, that's just what it happens to be written in. Um, but I looked upon somewhere and found a bit about Java packaging. And in fact, it was very easy. In comparison to all the other things I've packaged, it was totally trivial. I had to type Java C, star, class, everything, uh, and it spat out a thing. And so long as I used OpenJDK, it worked. If I used anything else, it didn't work. Um, so I made it depend on that. Now, I don't know if that's right or good or any of that stuff, um, but it wasn't difficult. Uh, but I have no idea whether I've done a good job. It works. We have a meta package called um, Default Java. On some platforms, OpenJDK doesn't exist. So on those, on those platforms, it's GCJ. You may find, if your package is doing something weird, that it will only work with OpenJDK. Uh, and in which case, you have to use OpenJDK. Um, we're gonna, I'm going to mention several of that stuff in the next talk. It was simply a matter of some bits being missing in the um, freer or non-sun um, class path stuff, library stuff. Um, uh, yeah, I was going to say something else, but I've forgotten. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a 700k of Java. I've no idea that makes it a tiny package, a medium-sized package, or a huge package. I mean, it looks complicated to me as an application, but I have no idea where that comes on the scale of things. Uh, compared to things like Eclipse, that's quite small. <laughs> Okay, so maybe we can choose another topic to, to discuss now. Uh, maybe something uh, on the lines of uh, <coughs> the, uh, an automatic build system and test cases during builds, that type of tooling. I mean, we have plenty of tooling to, to build packages, but uh, more tooling to be used by the whole team in, this build, in the way of uh, uh, running our test cases automatically and stuff like that. Uh, you, I think you, you suggested this. What do you have in, in mind there? Yeah, is it uh, automatic uh, nightly builds? So it comes from me. Whatever nightly means in Debian, because we are also global. Um, <coughs> yes, the idea is that we find some API or API breakage early, because we cannot fully avoid such breakages. And uh, earlier this year, I've uploaded uh, ant 1.8 and uh, to break some packages uh, because it's such an important tool, such a core tool. Um, so it would be nice to just have uh, automatic builds at least of all uh, packages that are packaged by the Java team once a day. So if something breaks, you will get notice very early and you can still remember what you have done to break the other packages. If we can do something like that, that's a good idea. And uh, Niles and I were, were um, I have just made a not entirely trivial change to Java Helper, and Niles has tested a bunch of packages, but it would, you know, um, nice to be able to test all of them in an automatic fashion. If you're at testing, I think we had some other, um, yeah, the next point is, is close to this, so I think we should start uh, running the tests during build time for most of the packages even if we, uh, if we will ignore test failures for the moment, that might happen very often, but so we will see the test failures in the build logs. That would help with the nightly builds. If something breaks, you can check the build logs for test failures and such things, so. Uh, okay. Yeah, that I think that we should change. The, the nice thing about something like nightly build is that it's something very easy to bring somebody new into the team that to, to, do, to work on that, for example. And you don't need to know so much about packaging, for example. I mean, at the end of the day, you're just going to be running all these builds and finding when they break. So if somebody wants to you know, join Debian Java and give a hand, this could really increase the <coughs> life quality of people running unstable. Can someone explain why nightly builds is an issue? I mean, you build, you upload the stuff and it builds uh, at the time, why will it break um, uh, unexpectedly? I think it's to do with when you, so uh, one of the things I'm gonna be talking about in one of the other talks is to do with transitions and things like that. And currently the story in Java is very bad for, for those things. 
Um, and particularly also with the culture upstream, people break stuff and uh, you, you might not find out until you upload and find all of your depends break, or some of them, the ones you didn't test. Um, or when we're changing packaging tool, helper tools and stuff, doing a rebuild for that sort of thing is, is very useful. Um, I don't know whether necessary should necessarily should be on demand or um, whatever, but having an infrastructure to do that would be useful. Hi, um, Timothy. So um, one of the things I've been um, struggling to package is Hudson, the um, um, continuous integration server, and it uses lots of Maven, and I'm not doing very well at it. But um, I've sort of looked at it last week. I'm wondering whether we could plug Debian packages into that and incorporate upstream. Maybe that would be an easy way to get started on that. Um, the downside is it's not packaged yet. <laughs> uh. There are also issues with Hudson and security, no? Sorry, what was that? I, there are also issues with Hudson and security. Uh, yes, almost certainly, yeah. Um, I'm Stefan. One related topic to this nightly build and testing. So to find out when something unexpectedly breaks or even earlier is already up here from someone about API and ABI compatibility. We had the same problem in my day job, where we develop some, some core platform and other people can deliver modules, which are using, of course, the code of the core platform. And those modules are sometimes not even published, so we can't really test them. So I need to ensure in some other way that they don't break. And then we used some free tool set called JAPI tools um, to export the API, or better, the ABI, so the symbols, and do some API checks. So someone developed this, for example, to comparing the, the class libraries built by this is a open JDK, so class pass and open JDK and fun JDK. And this is quite a nice tool and should be, I guess, rather easy to implement. Just for example, when uploading, exporting this ABI or even before uploading and then running this compatibility check. So, so the, you are talking about the automated API, ABI compatibility checking tool? Uh, yes. Yeah, that seems to blend in fairly well with the uh, current topic. So, do you have any, uh, any? Ah, yes, Jappy2 is the name. I can look up the URL and put it on, on the editor later. Nice. Uh, this is a slightly different topic, but I just have a question. Um, so I'm not a member of the, of the ac actual Java team. In terms of team maintenance, uh, but I may be soon. <laughs> um, but in terms of team maintenance, I mean, is would you like to see more packages team maintained? or Because I was thinking about this automated build, right, and one way to do it would be able to just get everything from the archive that's maintained by the Java team. Um, uh, I think moving things under team maintenance is always a good idea. Um, for one, just because, uh, you know, sometimes people don't have as much time as they need to and it makes it easier for people in the team to fix things up. Um, but also because it allows us to use these sorts of uh, tools and it makes it more e e easy for us if we want to make you know sweeping changes to, 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 to some of these things uh, so yeah sure um, uh, we're always happy for more people to join the team and even if you don't join the team if you just want to um, use the, the repository um, to keep stuff there that's, that's excellent okay. the only reason I ask is because the the other thing that happens is it's going to increase um, the it's going to increase the amount of mail right that so if the, if the when bug reports for packages that are actually maintained by the team come through? Or is there some other practice that you'd like to see us use? Because I don't want to just throw a bunch of small Java packages and then all of a sudden you guys have to read more and more mail. Well, I mean, we, we, we have a, a list, a separate discussion list to, to the uh, package Java's maintainers list. So I don't think that's particularly an issue. Um, I'd rather see more packages than team maintained. One of, but one of the problems we're having is uh, MIA handling at the moment. Some people join the team, bring their packages, and then disappear. And then, <coughs> you know, that's that's more of an issue. You, know, you join the team with a small package, it's fine, but stick around and maintain it. So uh, uh, a couple of points related to that. One is, is that the, one of the things that's worked really well for the Perl team is that there's they there's two separate um, set of lists. Uh, one which gets the bugs on Perl itself, 
and the core stuff, and another one which gets the bugs on all the, the, the team-maintained Perl packages, because there's you know, a thousand or more of them at this point. Uh, and you might want to consider that in the long run if you get kind of overwhelmed by bug traffic on JRandom uh, Java library when you're trying to maintain the core Java packages. Um, a quick note on something that was on here as a topic, um, the, the bind v6 only stuff. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if, this, if everyone realized this, but that's, that's been reverted. Um, so it's not, the, the version of NetBase that's currently in the archive does not set, um, does not set that. And so it's back to the default kernel behavior. Um, anyone who's actually installed NetBase while it was setting that still has the old setting. Because uh, it, didn't, it didn't go back and change and remove the configuration file that's already there. Um, and there's a further discussion about that. But the, it, it, at the very least, anybody who's upgrading from Lenny to Squeeze will not get that behavior. Do you know whether that um, behavior is true for um, K3BSD? What's that? For K3BSD, uh, does that have the bind v6 only equals one or zero behavior? Uh, that's a really good question, and I don't know. Um, the last that I'd heard, the, it, they had kept the, the default BSD kernel behavior, which is bind v6 only is one, um, but they said it was a kernel parameter that could be changed. Um, given that we just had a, a Debian technical committee discussion about all this, and like lots of flame wars and Debian Devel, and everybody seems to have concluded that zero is the best default, um, probably somebody should go explicitly ask the BSD team, could you please set this to zero for the squeeze release? They seemed quite willing to do that if that's what we all decided we wanted to do. Okay, I was a little lost. <laughs> so so you just said that we are going to go with that flag uh, switch to the way make yeah. Java applications happy? Yeah. Yes. Woohoo! Okay. Yes. So there, there will be a problem for people who upgraded to the net base that was in um, SID and Squeeze for the period of time that was setting that flag. Those folks will get the, the behavior which breaks Java. Um, but anyone who, went, who goes directly from Lenny to Squeeze and anyone who is installing it from now on will not get the behavior which breaks Java. Okay, so let us see. <coughs> Okay, um, let's, can you scroll down where we have in the bottom? Yeah, what about the DM, DM Ryu and the, the DM based languages like Qcode and JRuby? Yes, uh, I, yes uh, I'm toast by the way. Yes, I, I was wondering uh, why we call every uh, Java library uh, or every package, every binary package lib something in Java. Um, I think that's not appropriate for other languages or for packages that are written in other languages. They just happen to use the JVM with our virtual machine. That's why I wanted to propose something that uh, we are using the language name or the programming language name in the source package if that's useful, so lib something Java, if it's a Java package, just, and lib something Scala, if it's a Scala package. And for the binary package, I would use the, uh, uh, the virtual machine. So lib something JVM, if it's a classic Java virtual machine, or lib something GZJ, if it's uh, GZJ native package, or lib something JNI, that's what we are actually use for native code, and maybe Lip something Dalvik if he ever starts shipping Dalvik VM. I, I love that idea, but it sounds like a lot of busy work. Uh, yes. uh, Emmett Hickory. The curious question I have about that change in naming scheme is how does it affect things like IKVM, where we have one VM implemented in another? Quick question about that. Are, if you have some uh, package written in Java or Clojure or whatever, are the binary packages all useful for the other ones? Can they all link against them? Um, if I write my package, in, if I write a library in Java, can this be used by Clojure or Scala or whatever? Yeah, 
Uh, one thing that uh, you may find, I know you mentioned closure up there, and I know a little bit about that. Uh, you, we may find when we get to that, there's a uh, similar problem. They're using, starting to build their own build system. I think it's called Linengine. And it's, uh, they also have another site called Clojars, which I'm not all that familiar with Maven and Java, but I believe it's similar to that. It may be even based on it. So it pulls a whole bunch of jar, closure jars from random places to build whatever package they're building. Like, uh, I was trying to remember the big web, Composure is one of the big web frameworks that does some of that. So anyway, that's something I guess you'll have to consider too. I don't know if I have any questions offhand. So what do you guys want to talk about? Or it doesn't need to be here. <coughs> Somebody has. Just a quick question. You were suggesting that you wanted more packages to be team maintained. What's required to make your package team maintained? Just add Java team to the maintainers list. Is that it? Or we have, a, we have a subversion and Git repository, and so if it, the source is in somewhere we can find it, it allows the team maintain, you know, if we try want to do any team maintainer changes, then we know where to find it. How does that link back to the upstream? Well, you just maintain the Debian part, or? Um... Uh, it, it very much depends on the packages. The subversion is mainly just the separate Debian does. I know there are some people using uh, Git with pristine upstream branches and so on. Okay, I'm going to throw shamelessly a topic I care about and I was told no on the mailing list, so why not keep insisting until I got people tired and say yes. Uh, that is having libraries with source code. You know, when you are debugging something on Eclipse, it's very nice to have the source code. And uh, the reason uh, people say no is because, of course, you don't want to have a whole set of debug packages because it's just more packages and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, you know, we are about free software, so we want to have all the source code there, so you can actually look at it and understand how the thing works. Isn't that spelled app get source? And that's the part where it's not the case, because as you start having all these Maven uh, build systems, the source is distributed a bunch of, of different folders. So you, I have been doing that for some libraries, but then I have to, you know, get a class and fish around, and then changing Eclipse where the source code is located for different classes in the same jar. That, that's definitely suboptimal. Um, I'd have thought that's more a problem in Eclipse than, than, than with that packaging. I mean, all, all of our source is available. If the, the package makes it hard to just get source and see the source, then you know, maybe that's a change we should make to the package, but I don't think we should necessarily be shipping source in all the binary packages. Um, I think the kind of the, isn't the root of the problem there basically that Eclipse doesn't know how to find the source. So I mean, the problem with AppGet source is that it puts the source somewhere, wherever you happen to be. Um, but if you, I mean, if you, we clip, ideally what you want to do is have essentially the same behavior as you have in GDB when you start tracing through debugging symbols. If you install a debug package, it knows the debugging symbols are just right there. If we had a standard path where we could install source or, uh, source jars, then it, in theory, Eclipse we should be able to do the same kind of thing. And well, correct me if I'm what, wrong. What I'm trying to convince people is to generate a source jar to begin with. Uh, to repeat, uh, what I'm trying to convince is for us to include on in our build system generating these source charts. We, we currently don't have them. Uh, I think, I, I don't think that's necessarily a bad idea, but I definitely think it should be a separate package and not, not installed by, by default. Uh, so debug package or, or, or similar. Yeah, or a source package or whatever, but. Uh, is the main objection that you just don't want to have twice as many packages or that you don't want to have bloat in the archive? I don't have any objections. I want this stuff. No, I mean, <laughs> well, because but, but, but do you have an objection to it being as debug packages rather than shipped in the, in the main thing? No, I want debug packages. And actually, you know, even, even just if you have in Java Helper something that I can get this, the source and then build it again and have the debug packages built by myself and I can install, that even that will be better than the current situation. But okay. uh, when we have this discussion a while ago on the mailing list, people, somebody says something that, uh, says, oh, and you should only look at the API, you shouldn't look at the implementation. And I'm saying, yes, that's true, but this is, 
you know, you, you're here, you have all the source code, so you want to profit from that and find the bugs and, and fixes and all that stuff. Well, I ask because I think sometimes people have objected in the past more broadly in Debian to having so many, you know, so many extra packages. And I was going to say one, maybe not a good solution, but an alternative to that might be to have some way. I forget whether or not we do this with some other packages to set a flag or something so that the source could be in the package, but it may get excluded when it's actually installed on the system depending on how you have it set. But um, I'm not sure that we have anything like that at the moment. Um, can you that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, so one of the things I'm going to talk about in, in the next um, uh, session, which is slightly germane to this, is that um, with C and, uh, and other languages, you have a dev package which you need to build against. With Java, you don't necessarily need that, but there are some advantages in terms of handling transitions, but possibly, but what you'd essentially end up with is a package that just contains a single symlink. Uh, but if we're considering this as a, as a sensible option. Maybe what we have are dev packages which contain a source jar um, and some of the other stuff to, to build against. Um, and, and then we can combine those two things to not have so many um, packages lying around. Should those dev packages also register in class path so that the standard debuggers find them and everything, or? Somebody just uh, added something at the end of here uh, of the document about uh, Java Home on update Java alternatives. Yeah, I added that one as a developer of some non-packaged application where we have some wiki page telling people how to install and set up the system so our build system and application works. And for this application, we have the requirement of Java Home being set up and pointing to the JDK you are using to. And Update Java Alternatives already does a nice job of synchronized switching all the tools, but I don't know if the policy allows setting an environment variable automatically in this job also. Um, I don't think we can have it set an environment variable, but it may well be sensible to have a symlink which points to your current Java Home. So you say, uh, user share Java Home or whatever we decide is the path. And, um, that will point to whatever your current update alternative settings is. I think that we have already. Userlib, JVM, something, there's a, at least a generic one. If you pick open JDK, that you have at least not the version number in it. Um, what is close to your request is the, uh, I don't see it here, that I proposed is sensible with Java. Yeah. Um, ah, okay, so it's, I can paste the link to the wiki page there, and I have already a working prototype, so maybe uh, that's enough what you want. Um, about the proposal, if you just go back, back down. We have a similar proposal, a bug report against Java Common in Ubuntu for similar behavior about that. I don't know if you just wrote, read it. Uh, and one of the things uh, I said is that it's a little difficult to c convince people to set this uh, variable, especially because it has no meaning if we don't have Java on the system, and many systems work without Java. So, but basically I'm willing to implement the part of creating a symbling that could be updated with alternatives that could set your Java home too. Uh, I don't mind that. But the part of setting Java home for our users is, I don't know how to do that. Um, and you're very welcome if you have an idea to help us with it. Otherwise. It's a totally different topic. I just happened to notice um, Git versus Subversion and a whole lot of Java programmers use Mercurial as well. So it might be nice to update that. Oh, well, okay. oops. So that refers to that currently on Debian Java, we, we have our pack, team maintained packages using JIT and SVN. I don't think we have Mercurial, no. And uh, I, for example, I myself, I'm just starting on JIT, so I, the stuff that is currently maintained on JIT, there might be dragons I wouldn't look at it or check things in or stuff like that, which uh, it's, uh, it's bad. I mean, you, you want contributors to be able to contribute in there. Yeah, right. uh, I noticed the point at the bottom there about JIT and non-JIT implementations. Uh, so for people who aren't aware, uh, at the moment we have essentially three different 
uh, JVM, depending on your architecture. We have OpenJDK on an architecture where it has a JIP, and we have OpenJDK on some others, with, but it doesn't have a JIP for that architecture, and then on some others, mainly HTTPA, I think, um, there's no OpenJDK at all, um, uh, oh, and K3BSD at the moment, so there's only uh, DPJ on there. Um, so what I, what, what I think would be a nice goal if we can manage it would be to have a system where basically we say, we use OpenJDK in the same way that you know, there is only one implementation of Python on the system or whatever. Um, I, don't know, you know, I don't know how feasible it is or what things we want to do. The problem here with is it acceptable to only have a non-JIT uh, implementation is, well, there isn't a JIT implementation, so what would you like to do? The, the, that's, I would like to tie it also with the topic of supporting multiple JVMs. It's kind of like we, we are setting ourselves to a much easier task if we only support OpenJDK, but in the real world, <laughs> There's all these proprietary JVMs, which I suffer the IBM JDK, JVM implementation. But the nice thing about that is that it exposes a lot of new bugs on, on, on the jars. So, so it's not so bad to support multiple JDKs because these are real bugs on the jars. Does uh, OpenJDK uh, include the uh, the com .sun .security, uh classes, um, particularly Curve Five login module and some of the rest of the stuff that's sitting in there? Uh, I know there are some people who have issues around that area relating to OpenJDK and are using the non-free Sun the, the Sun uh, JDK for non-free. Uh, I don't know if it's because they're completely missing or just because there are some some bugs in the implementation. Okay. It's that anything related to Kerberos going forward is it tends to wander into that territory fairly quickly. I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff in the generic GSS API bits if you already have Kerberos tickets, but if you need to obtain Kerberos tickets from scratch from a key tab, then you're immediately into um, Comsun security stuff. Um, sadly, uh, Tom uh, Marble is in a parallel session, but uh, he's involved in the uh, Open JDK jigsaw puzzle, and he's giving a talk at the end of the track. He will be the, the, the perfect person to answer that. Okay, great. <coughs> okay, so any ideas with uh, about Java security and find, finding embedded duplicate? Uh, it's in code. So Lintian has a whole bunch of tests uh, for finding uh, embedded code already. Um, we keep adding new ones. Um, they're sort of scary. They're, they're, mostly te they're mostly checking for um, C embedded C libraries, and so what they're mostly doing is looking in your binaries for strings that match error messages that happen to occur inside those libraries. But um, like many things in Lintian, it's, it's amazing how far you can get with some ugly heuristics and a few hacks. Um, Certainly, we're happy to take more stuff along those lines um, and anything else related to Java. Uh, it's always better um, for tests specific to a particular language and a particular set of policy if there's in anyone involved in that team who's, who's willing to sort of translate that policy into here are the things that Lintian can specifically check. Um, you know, because I know there's a lot of things about that you, where you set a policy and then you think about how do you actually check that with an automated tool and it becomes a little tricky. Um, but yeah, anything, we're, we're happy to take that kind of thing. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. We can continue this conversation over lunch and uh, this document will stay here if you want to add more things later on too, if you remember or uh, thank you so much for contributing and uh, I hope you stay for the rest of the track. We have some very interesting talks. Thank you. <laughs>